Oh, thank us. Before we get into this episode, you know we got to thank our daddies of the pod. You know what being a daddy is? means that you are on the fucking Patreon, and you're our number one daddies. So we got to thank Kayla, Robin, Jordan Texera, Jay Lingle, Spencer Grieve, Javier Mera, Sheila Valeri, Chandler, Luana Galbano, Ali Santana, Carla Juarlo, Kimberly Huelen, Alonso Over My Face 69, Donia Denad, Jimmy, Muhammad Patel, Kimmy, sponsored by Mommy of the Pod, Hollister 584, Live Lot, Cat, Future Dog Dion, Steph Grossi, JB Fresh, Laura, Emily Gillenwater, Cody Hull is my F1 daddy, Brand w keep up the signs hate get ready for a lot of that in this episode hunter scruggs and sal manella mozzarella if you want to be a daddy of the pod you can go to patreon.com slash trf pod and become our angel our angel daddy thank you daddies now on to the show <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the 2023 Flaggy Awards. I am your host, yet again, Jenny Sue Birnbaum, and we're going to have such an exciting night tonight, going over the thrills, the ups, the downs, the surprises of Max Verstappen's championship season. So, without further ado... Yo! Hey, yo, hey, yo! Yeah, you think this is an awards show, baby? You think this is the Oscars, bitch? No, this is the Oscar piastres, baby. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to bring this whole shit down for free, baby. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Yeah, baby. I don't care. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't care. What's up, Vankers? How do you? How do you guys like that music? That fucking just making love after not showering for days. Fucking hardcore music. Dude. Hardcore rock and roll, baby. Yeah, Jenny, get off the stage. You're coming in. You're coming into the back with us, Jenny. You're not. It's, you're coming to the back. Take your lipstick off. Take your. I'm take taking, your, Yeah, taking these extensions out. Take the extensions. Take these out. Eyelashes out. That's right. Just gonna just gonna take the heels here off. Here we go. It's always yeah. great in a movie. Here we go. I love I'm it. Ready. My favorite part in a movie was when a girl yeah. takes her heels off. That's when you yeah. know she's about to fuck shit up. Yeah, when she takes her heels off, she's carrying it around her fucking her hands. That's when you know that you're about to get yelled at. Yeah. You see a, <laughs> hey, if you're if you're leaving a bar and you see a girl with barefoot with her heels in her hands, get the fuck out the way, okay? Because that might as well to get real. Yeah, that shit might as well be Max Verstappen, circa 2016 through 2020, because yeah. he's coming through the fucking midfield, and you better watch the fuck out. All right. Well, fucking a. Yeah, we're doing the flaggy words. We're doing a little bit different than than we did them last year. We're getting. We're doing them rock and fucking roll. Thank you to Chris Kester or Chester. We're not, we're not exactly sure how to say, but that's that's the fucking new intro music. So that's gonna be some of the new music that's involved. Oh, Jenny's Jenny's literally taking the extensions out of her hair. Yeah. No. No joke. <laughs> Jenny's literally no taking the extensions out of her hair. She literally. This did- is why you watch the YouTube. This is why you watch the YouTube. If, yeah, you but gotta you watch know, this you guys show on know that You guys know the band Jet. Yeah, you guys know the band Jet. so fine and you really, want, really want to make it mine. You look so fine and I really want to make it mine. Yeah, this is the drummer for Jet sent us that that's fucking song, dude. Yeah, that fucking heater. It just says fucking I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, baby, come on. That's is that's you know not amazing? red flags culture. Yeah, is is we have two rocker fans. We have him, and we yes. have Damiano. Damiano. 
Just just two like hardcore rockers. Who, two of the hottest rock stars that have of, of the modern era. Who look like they like like throwback rockers who look like they fuck. Yeah, those guys fuck. And that's why they listen to the Red Flags <laughs> podcast, dude. Because if you listen to this podcast, you fuck. And that I, yeah. I, I don't make the rules, just okay? <laughs> it's just what it is. It's a fact. But yeah, we're fucking here. We're going to do let's 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 fucking get let's get into this award ceremony 2023 in the books. We put the polls up on the socials and we're going to see what what the Vanka Nation thought were the deserved winners of our categories. Jenny, take it away. Thank you. So, shout out to everyone who voted. We had about 5,000 votes for each category, Woo! okay? Woo! So, that's numbies. Um, yeah. so, so don't get mad at us when the results suck, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blame democracy. This is why you need a strong dicta- a co-dictatorship. That's right. Exactly. Disclaimer. Yeah, Jenny, <laughs> Jenny has internet trouble, so you're only going to be hearing her from now on. A voice of God if you're watching this on YouTube. Okay. All right. So the first award of the 2023 Flaggies is Daddy of the Year. Boom. Big one. And the nominees are Papa Fernando, Yuki beating every boss, Lewis, who's a literal tired dad who works way too hard, and Max just being Max. All right. So what do you think of this? All right. We got Papa Fernando, Yuki beating every boss, Lewis being a literal tired dad who works too hard, and Max just being Max. I got to say, it's for me, it's between... Fernando for being the age that he is. Mm-hmm. And Max for literally Yeah. Or nah, I would say I would say I you know what? I would say it's between I would say it's between Fernando and Lewis. What do you think? See, here's the thing. To me, it's Max for Stappen is daddy of the year. That is and and you know what? He's not going to win because I know how the voting body fucking works. And I know that this town is bought and paid for by Fernando Alonso. And you've done a lot of good work. You've done a lot of good He's work on this podcast. He is he is raising he is raising he is co-parenting another driver's child that is also and and dominating. He's dominated and dominating the entire grid. Max is dominant He's making the entire grid his, his are, are his children. Yes, and he is literally parenting like a step a stepfather to another child. To oh, another I see child. what you mean. He's step. Oh, he's literally a, a father figure to a child in his yes. real life. See, because in his real it, life. I mean, Fernando Alonso this year was Lance Stroll's daddy, and he was Aston Martin's daddy for sure. No, but Max actually did. Made Lance Strolls out of everybody. Everyone was Lance Stroll to yes. Max Verstappen this year. Yes. That's so yes. to me. Max is the rightful winner of this award. I mean, it's an honorable mention for Yuki Lewis. Obviously, you know, if there was a single mom who works two jobs, who loves her kids and never stops, with a gentle hand and the heart of a fighter, that's the Survivor Lewis Hamilton Award. That he would definitely win that <laughs> for sure, hundred percent. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, to me, it's Max Verstappen. So should let's 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 hear. You convinced me. You convinced me. I was afraid. I I, I was afraid to go in too hard for Max. But you yeah. you made it a safe place for me. Yeah, and it's Max Verstappen. Let's yeah. see what the dumb populace says. Let's see what the populace said. Well, with fifty one percent of the vote. Ooh, Ooh that's some oh, Joe Biden shit. numbers right there. <laughs> <laughs> the people gave it to Papa Fernando. Wow. Oh! Sneaky Papa Fernando. You know, for any other pod, you know, other podcasts, it might not be that. But this is the podcast where that's that's some home. That's some home field advantage right there. Yes. Yes. And you know what? You know what this award feels like? It's kind of like when Martin Scorsese won the directing award for The Departed. You know? Yeah. It was kind of like he's due, he's, he's due. due, he's due, and you know what? This was a good one. So let's just give it. You know, it's like it's the body of work. Fernando didn't win that award for his work this year. He won that for his body of work for his whole. You know what's crazy is I rewatched the Departed. The Departed. Yeah, not even his best movie. Recently. Oh, d- definitely. Oh, his best recent movie. 
it, like, Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street than, is yeah, so much yeah, better yeah. than the Departed. <laughs> yeah, Wolf of Wall Street is is better than that. It's yeah. held up so much better than the Departed. The Departed yeah. is a bit of a mess. Yeah, compared to the Wolf of Wall Street, which is just per- a perfect movie. <laughs> yeah, and and Logan Sargent's favorite movie, apparently. Um, the Departed. So, no, no, Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> I love that. Um. All right. I was at the premiere of the. I was at the premiere of Wolf of Wall Street, and I was like, "This is a lot." And then I rewatched it recently. And I yeah. was like, "This is the best movie I've ever seen." Well, I watched that movie when it was. I watched it in theaters, and I was when when that movie came out. It was a big like. It's you're toxic if you like this movie. It was like a there was a big debate at the time. I remember watching it and loving it, and then being like, it's, "Can I say that I liked this movie?" <laughs> this I was like, I was laughing my ass off in this movie. Um, did it accomplish what it wanted to accomplish? Um, no. Maybe not, which was to Definitely deter not. people from that way of life. It probably encouraged plenty of people to get into that type of thing. But anyway. It definitely ruined one of our friends' lives. It did. It did. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's move on. Wait, wait. Who got second? Who got second? Let me. Let me let oh, yeah, down. yeah. I guess. Okay. Well, yeah, with yeah. second, with 20% of the vote, yeah. uh, Max. Max got second. Okay. Okay. Can I just say, this is... We've created a monster with this Fernando thing. Let's just let's just start there. We we've we've <laughs> <laughs> yes we. <laughs> last time I checked, last time I checked, we 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 co-own the Red Flags podcast. That's true. Uh, I did. I, so, I co-signed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've no, we've yeah, we've created. Um, it, this is the definition this is of our populism. <laughs> He's a populist. <laughs> No, but the the thing is, it's like they've now that this vote is a result of of the capital storming that we've we've right. created. Yeah, we've we've worked really hard for that to be the answer for this. <laughs> so I guess we should revel in it. <laughs> Holy shit! It's crazy. Yeah, they're gonna play back. We're, we're like, how? We're like, how did this happen? I don't know. <laughs> We have no idea how this happened, how Fernando won this award. Then we're going to be in court. They're going to play back like hours of tape of us being like, <laughs> Fernando Alonso only. If you want Fernando to win, to be a world driver's champion, you have to show strength. You show strength. You have to, okay. you have to show strength. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's keep it rolling. All right. Our next award is Insult of the Year. Mm. The nominees mm. are okay. Alex telling George Mercedes is only P2 because of Lewis. <laughs> uh, Brundle telling Cara Delevingne, well, wait, it would have been extremely interesting, whatever you had to say. <laughs> uh, Zach, when playing video games, saying, I'm dominating like Alonzo on Stroll. Mm. And Checo in a press conference saying, it's great to see three Red Bulls on the podium. Whew, this is an amazing category this year. <sighs> To me, it's clear the the three the three Red Bulls Checo. That's obviously that's that's, that's not, not in the running. Not his finest work. Well, you know, it's like that's just it's that's kind of like um, you're like, oh, I see what you did there. You know what I mean? Punching down a little bit. Yeah. Whereas like these other three, Albon roasting George in that clip was so beautiful. Yes, it was good. Um, I think we need we have to appreciate the the, the two worlds of of the uh, Brundle Cara Delevingne. Uh huh. Uh huh. There there just has to be appreciation of like how the universe never meant for these two people to interact. <laughs> right. Sure. And they did, and it was yes. fantastic. Right. Right. So there's just there's just that added level of like. These these people go through their lives a million times and they never speak. Right. But this one time they did. Right. It's like a flamingo meeting a penguin. You know what I mean? It's like this should never happen. Like like I'm sure Albon breaks George's balls all the time. Sure. And they just happen to catch that one on camera. Like that's probably right. not the most savage thing that Albon has said to George that year. Right. 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 Like that's just <laughs> friends breaking each other's balls. Yeah, sure. So, I and I'm sure George has shit on Albon in their in their like they've they've gone they go back. Yeah, it was just I think what was what was so great about that moment to me was like you don't usually see Albon like 
come in with the zinger like that. You know, he has this kind of like affable, nice guy thing. And there's also a sense where like George is all, I feel like George, you get a sense probably that George is always talking in those like little sound bites. And so then you, there was this catharsis of like someone being like, and just like cutting George off at his knees. Well, I just think Albon has a great sense of Albon is a nice guy, I think. Yeah. But I think he has a, a sense of like when he has an opportunity to like punch up or punch across. Right. Right. So like when he's like in a video, when we like when he's like speaking to fans, he, he mm-hmm. comes across like humble and nice and respectful because right. He understands his importance and his role as a role model or a leader or right. you know, somebody in a unique, privileged opportunity. But it's when he's with George, he's like, fuck George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he, he can read the room. He's like, he, he can adapt. He's a bit of a, I wouldn't say he's, he's not a chameleon, but he's like always, he's aware of the power dynamics of whatever situation he's in. So he's not going to be, whereas like someone like Max is just Max 100% of the time. You know, Max has one mode, yeah, he doesn't which is adjust. like, go. He doesn't, he doesn't really adjust. adjust. Like, Albon is a little bit more socially adept. So, but then he's like, that doesn't mean that... He, that, that means that in, it, when when the moment calls for it, he'll be a fucking catty little bitch. Well, but he knows that he's in he's in a Williams, so he can shit on George. In a, right, in a yeah, he's punching up. He's punching up. Yeah. I don't know if you saw, did you see that he he what he said? He was recently on the High Performance podcast? No. So he's on this. He was on the high performance podcast, which a bunch of the drivers have gone on, and and some of the team principals. Um, and he was talking about um, his year with Max, and you oh, know his year and a half. This. I did. And see he this. was like that. He was off the pace. You know, Max was in fourth, and he was like three tenths off of Max. So when Max is fighting for like fifth or fourth, Albon's in tenth or eleventh, and right. that looks really bad. But then when Checo replaced him, Max was fighting for wins and Checo was fighting for fourth or fifth. But Checo, the actual time differential was smaller than Alex's time differential. So he was basically, and he was doing it in this nice way, but it was definitely, I was like, whoa, he's kind of, he is basically saying, I am better than Checo, and Checo's been able to cruise, you know, not cruise, but Checo's been able to, like, have these three years. You're saying that the time difference between Max and Albon is smaller than the time difference between Max and Checo. Yes, that's what Alex was saying on the pod. Interesting. So Alex was looking at, like, he was looking at Checo's timesheet. So Checo was finishing in 2021, and then, you know, Checo's won races, and Checo is fighting for, like, fourth or third and that looks better when you just look at the places. But if you actually get in there and you look at the time differential, Alex was closer. So if Alex had been in that car, well, basically what he was saying is I would have been finishing ahead of Checo. I would be based off of just that. I'd be second so he, or third every time. Yes. And so he was talking about the difficulties of like that season watching that. And, you know, 2021, Checo was lauded and, and was like, oh, Checo's a legend. Like, remember, you know, and uh, but and, and how that was it was very tough for Alex to see that and see that good, you know, energy going towards him when he and he's like, he's like and he says, like, not to take away that, like, I don't think I had a great season and I understand why what, ha- what happened to me happened. But Checo had a longer leash. He had a longer leash, and he was calling him out on this. Po- I was like, "Oh, this is like a scoop." Alex Albon, in his in his own way, is like, he's talking a little bit of shit, coming in with some adult. Like, I'm ready to fuck shit up. Like, I think Alex Albon's going to come into 2024 and and going forward. Like, I'm here to fuck shit up. Well, he's ready. He's been rumored to go to Ferrari. Yeah, been some rooms. There's there's a rumor mill that he's going to Ferrari. Well, yeah, I heard he talked about. He kind of said like people people say the car is catered to Max. Yes, and he's like the car is not catered to Max. The car is the car, right? Right. <laughs> now, Max is just so Max knows is the only one who it. can drive that car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, which came first, the chicken or the egg? We're not exactly yeah, sure, but, but you know, um, <laughs> nobody basically said it was like. Um, it's like a, a video game where the the mouse yeah, is yeah. like super right. super sensitive. 
Yeah, yeah. Now only it seems like only Max can really drive that that way. Right. Now you could argue, well, if that's now if you talk to a Red Bull person, they would say that's the fastest way to drive that car. Right. Is that way. Yeah. And if and if you were to slow down the mouse, then you wouldn't be able to drive as fast. Right. So that that's the counter for that. I think. Yeah, that's the that's the uh, the like kind of uh, the catch twenty two of the the Red Bull car a little bit, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Alex Alex Albon ready to fuck shit up. I think he's gonna win this. I think to me that's my winner. Also, got to shout out Zach Brown when he said that on that uh, you know that radio show, saying you know I'm like Alonso on stroll, you know, just saying the quiet part out loud. Yeah, he he's to me is a, is is um. He's the only other guy with Christian Horner potential. Yeah. To like shake shit up, totally. mix shit up. It'd be great if he had yeah. if he had a winning car. I mean, he just stole a fucking monster from Mercedes. Zach Brown fucking shit up. I'm obs- yeah. I'm obsessed. All right, let's 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 hear the winner. Let's hear what the people thought. All right, so the winner of Insult of the Year with yes. 35% is Zach Brown, I'm dominating like Alonzo on stroll. Wow! Surprising. Shocking that is surprising. A sh- that is a dark horse right there. Well, Stroll's just like an easy target. He is a bit I just of an feel easy like, target. I feel like he's so safe to go after. I feel like most content creators right, go feel after safe him going after cause, him, yeah. Because they're pussies. <laughs> and he's just a safe. Yeah. Right. They go after him and they go after like Logan. What the hell is a kilometer, Sergeant? Oh, I every time someone makes the what the hell is a kilometer joke, I'm like that's, you know, can you think of something on can your you own? Can you think of something else like Carlos signs his mid and sounds like Kermit the Frog <laughs> or yeah. Toto Wolf is bad at his job? <laughs> like dig deep. Yeah. Dig deep, you know? Yeah. Cuz yeah. they're put you're just a put you're just outing yourself for being a pussy cuz you're like you right. you cuz everyone's agreed that Logan is bad and what the hell right. is a kilometer? Right. And everybody has agreed that Lance Stroll is like a Nepo baby and mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just easy. It's, it's, just it's easy. low-hanging it's fruit. Just, it's low-hanging fruit, and it's just like it's your way to take a shot at somebody that you won't get any blowback. Right. So All right. Let's – let's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, all right. Let's, let's, let's keep it rolling. The next award we have is Most Improved Vibes Alone. Oh, okay. And the nominees are Oscar Piastri. George Russell, Alex Albon, and Otmar Safnauer. Who another strong category. Yeah, but these are kind of this one this this category is a tough one because I feel like some of these guys just like kind of didn't really exist before in any meaningful way. Well, yeah, Oscar Piastri like most improved, but it's like we no one knew he, I, he hasn't changed. He's just we just know him now. Yes. So there's that's uh, you know I could see him getting a sneaky win with this because people he wasn't in anyone's minds and now he's very much on people's minds. To me, um, it's a no. Uh, people will might say Albon just because like he's just been just been thrive out here thriving yeah. for another yeah. year and he's right. got another year to get that Red Bull stink off of him of the failure yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, and being that like sad guy. Who like has to recreate the crash of Silverstone? Remember when they had him do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. That was that was his life used yeah. to be, right? And now he just gets to fucking beat up Latifi and Sargent, <laughs> and he's living and he's dying his hair, and he's with yeah. Lily and just just having fun in interviews, doing the golf. But for me, it's it's not even close. It's got to be Otmar because Otmar went from like, <laughs> yeah, an absolute nerd that nobody cared about. Yeah, like he went from being like a Mike Crack type of figure that no one could give a fuck about mm-hmm. to an actual meme that right. people adore. Yeah, and people love to see on the internet. Yeah, and he's reached this Rossbergian status. Yeah, and I we saw him. We saw him in Austin, mm-hmm. and he didn't have a job. Right. And people were like, holy shit, it's Otmar. <laughs> and there right. was a vibe around him. <laughs> yeah. Getting fired was like the best thing that could have ever happened to him in the eyes of the public. Yeah, and he said the thing about... Uh, yeah. You can't get it. You can't 
fuck nine women in a month and right. expect <laughs> you can't fuck nine women and expect a baby in a month. Yeah. I mean, and he's the king of the selfie. I mean, that, well, I mean, he's nominated for memes later for the same thing. But like, th- he's giving us. No one gives us better content. No one gives better your divorced dad on like made an Instagram account and is now like trying to out here like trying to get pussy than Otmar Safnar. <laughs> 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 like no one does. No one does that better. <laughs> you know what I yeah. also like is like every other guy is like, look at me being rich over here. Look at me being rich over there. In right. this in this exotic Europe. Look at me in the Algarve. Look at yeah. me in Monaco. And then he's like, look at me in Lake Michigan. Yeah. With a fucking <laughs> butt light. Yeah. Yeah. Like not giving a fuck. I, yeah. I it, 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 it's <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. He's like, I'm about to go i I'm about to go fishing and love my life. <laughs> yeah. To me, that reads as more secure. Like, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I, I have a house in Lake Michigan. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's a hundred eighty thousand dollars straight up for this house. <laughs> like, yeah, or whatever it is. And I love it. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I guess yeah, he's he's my winner for this too. Let's see let's see what the people thought. With forty eight percent of the vote, the people chose Oscar Piastri for most improved vibes alone. Well, it's like it's what we said. It's what we said. Can we can we hear the rest of uh who what how everyone else finished? Sure. So the breakdown in um second with twenty three percent was Alex Albon. Third with eighteen percent, George Russell, and last place with ten percent, wow. Otmar. Wow, people sleeping on Otmar. You know, George, we've we've had an up and down year with George. George George is like that cu- us with George is like that couple that like keeps breaking up and getting back together, you know. No, but it's 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 never changing. Now, yeah, we're we're like we're in it now. Like no, this- I, yeah, I burned all the boats behind me. Yeah. We're stuck on the island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that couple that's always breaking up, getting back together, always breaking up and then like at one point they're like, "No, like I sold my house. It's happening. Like I'm moving in." Yeah. Yep. And Brian, it's your fault. This one's your fault because you said because you said he's Bessie Mitch, and I said, "Whoa!" Right? Yeah, he is. I had the Mitch. vertigo moment where the lens moves and everything yeah. moves behind. <laughs> you know that weird, yeah. you know that camera yeah. trick that Hitchcock. Yeah, does? yeah, where they like move the camera back, but they zoom in on the camera. Yes, so like, Holy that's shit. what yeah. happened to me. That's what happened you to you. It like that. that's, that's what, what happened, happened to you. you. Yeah, but it's like I feel like I feel like I have real influence because some of these votes, the fact that that George did as well as he did is thanks to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now these are these are these are the fucking tried and true vankers. As we saw, as we saw with the Spotify Wrapped, we got yeah. some dedicated motherfuckers out there. No, Oscar, Oscar, we just learned about him. I don't think he yeah. improved anything. Right. Our understanding improved, but he's yeah. an awesome guy, and I've been I've been hip. I've uh, loved him since since when they I thought. start loving him. Like his first radio or two, I was like, this guy is like, yeah, this guy's the truth. This guy's yeah, this guy's just fucking. A killer. All right, let's keep it rolling. All right. Next up, we have Meme of the Year. Ooh. And the nominees are George's Intro Pose, Mm. Fernando Sniffing the Flowers, Oscar's Face Post Jetpack Crash, and (laughs) the Post Vegas GP Uber Ride slash Backseat Cam. Ooh. Damn, such good options here. I mean, I actually don't think it's even close. Well, I know we we know who's going to win. It's obviously going to be George. Yeah, it's the pose. It's obviously the pose. The pose gave us so much this year. Obviously, that's but the but there's just so much in there. I mean, and we and we haven't re- like the pose. Obviously, incredible. Um, what was the second one? Was Fernando slipping the sniffing? Oh, the Fernando flowers. slipping the flowers. That's yeah, that was okay. But Fernando gave us so much this year that you know that was that one was fine. Um, we have a oh, you have a whole Fernando category that's dedicated to that. But Oscar's moment with the with with the guy crashing and falling. That was when a lot of people I think fell in love with Oscar. That was like a big moment for him. But that that picture of the three of the the boys at the end of Vegas riding in the Rolls Royce was like. It was like a Caravaggio painting. It was like beautiful. I mean, that shit was like that was a Renaissance fucking ass. Should be in a museum. Like someone should paint that, put it onto a fucking wall in the Met, and it should be studied. 
A picture sp- speaks a thousand words. That one spoke fucking ten thousand miles, baby. Yeah, that one was. Um, I mean, that was. I mean, it was giving like Aristotle, Plato, and who's the third one that they all that was they Socrates. They, they all, Socrates. It was like giving. It was giving this like. It was just beautiful. Symposium vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's not going to win. I mean, it's, every time you want something to be a painting, you say Caravaggio. I'm like, does he? He's have, my, does he? Does does he got any other ones? That's the one I know the best, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's my guy, dude. I love Caravaggio. He's my guy. Caravaggio's my guy, <laughs> dude. Caravaggio's my fucking guy, dude. He was just did. Car- no one fucked like Caravaggio. That guy fucked. You know um, Albert Dura, Brian. No. He was like one of the German mass uh Dutch or German I think he was a German master Dura. Yeah. He um a GI yeah, he's German. A GI yeah. uh came to my uncle's house. I was like, You want to buy some paintings? They fell off the back of a truck in Germany. Uh-huh. And my uncle was like, Yeah, sure, and he paid like two hundred dollars for him. Uh-huh. And um my uh my my uncle's friends were like looking through um, a book that was like priceless German art lost in World War II, stolen by the Nazis or something. And that was on there. And they looking through the book and they see yeah. a picture of Uncle Eddie's paintings. That's fucking crazy. And he was like, whole, and they, it's like, he's like, Eddie, these are your paintings that are like on your wall. <laughs> yeah. That you bought for two hundred dollars, and he yeah, took, and, put him in a brown. There's like a there's a there's a leak from your upstairs bathroom. My dad You're... used to shoot him with water guns. <laughs> like he used to run around the house with water guns and shoot him in Brooklyn. Say so my my uncle puts him in a in a brown paper bag on the subway, takes him to like the Met or something. Yeah, and they get like um, accredited or whatever the word. right yeah they yeah appraised. They get yeah. they get the blue check mark or whatever the yeah fuck. yeah right all right. And then the West German government sues him, and they go to court for like twenty years. It was the longest litigation in New York because these paintings are priceless, and my uncle loses the paintings. He has to give them back. And the law firm, the law firm that, um, the law firm that sued my uncle, yeah. my dad ended up working for. It like the 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 the, the victory. The money that that law firm like got like made the bones of that that those partners oh. got like made the bones of that law firm. So when they hired a guy named Ellis Offen, the like the, these old partners came running down and they're like, "Holy shit, are you are you related oh to Eddie Ellis Offen?" And they were like, and my dad was like, "Yeah, it's my uncle." It's like we sued him, and the profits from that built this firm. And my dad was like, "Oh, cool." Oh my god, that's yeah, crazy! So- you never told me that. Yeah. My 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 family had like rare Nazi stolen art in in their That's house in fucking Brooklyn. Crazy because because what happened was is that when the G when the when the GIs came when the when the Americans came the Nazis ran yeah. away and they they took the Nazi the, they stole the art that the Nazis stole. Basically. Oh, I see, I see. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Wow. All right, Albrecht Durer, go off. King. So that's my that's my <laughs> Renaissance art. And I say, and I'll go to a, I'll go to a, I'll go to a, a museum in Europe and I'll see a Dura paint. The thing was is he mostly did like wood etchings. Yeah. Like wood he did prints and wood etchings and shit. That was This was a painting. Dura only had like 12 to 13 paintings. Whoa. So they were very rare. Holy worth shit. Worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Anyway. And your uncle I wait, but sorry, your uncle took your uncle was a GI or he was given it to to him by a GI. I think some names have been changed and some some as, aspects have been changed to like okay. legally protect people, but I'm okay. pretty sure it was my uncle had a friend, yeah, who was a GI who yeah. stole them from whatever right, from the Nazis from from, yeah. from whatever place he was quote unquote guarding because that's what happened. They were supposed to they're like guard this mansion, right, don't let right, anyone. Right. And they're like and then they take the shit, yeah. And right, basically, my right. uncle Eddie. Had like a reputation. He 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 bought and sold. Like he was like a local art collector, quote unquote. Right. So like he he bought art. So he had a reputation in the neighborhood of buying art. 
but it's obviously not at this level. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were like, hey, there's this guy. He's a lawyer. He's like, you know, he's, he's you know, comfortable and he buys art. So maybe he'll be interested. So he thought the, pa- the, thought the paintings looked nice, bought the paintings and forgot about them until someone saw him in a book. That's that was like priceless insane. German art. And he didn't get it paid at all. He got no money from that. No, what he did was is a, he he what happens in these cases is is you is you fight it out with a lawyer. The right. lawyer takes on the case on what's called a contingency. Yeah, which yeah, means yeah. It's like if, if they I get, win, if I win, you, I get a I get a piece of I it. I get a you get a cut. So yeah, he didn't yeah, yeah. he didn't pay anything. Right, right, right. It was the hope that like you'll win and then you sell it and you get like hundreds of millions of dollars. Right. But right, then right. you lose and you get the and you and your lawyer get nothing and the West German government and their lawyers get everything. Wow. And if he had just been like, I'll sell it to you guys for for a steal, five billion <laughs> I guess it would have been I, I didn't you could like look it up. It's like That's it was in the it was incredible. national news. Like oh, if you yeah, look up yeah. the way my name is initially is originally spelled E L I C O F O N. Yeah. It's like Ellisoffen versus Kanishla Schlack and yeah. government. Whoa. Yeah, fucking A, dude. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, if you look up, like, because my name actually has a, it's not really Ella right. Coffin. It's actually Ellis, Ella Coffin. Ella Coffin, just Dura. It's like, it was like, this real is all stated. Jenny, leave this all in. This is what <laughs> this the is Red Pod is, dude. <laughs> this is Washington Post. This is Washington Post. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at Edward, like a, a law website. Yeah. No, it's 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 actually on the it's it's on the Washington Post. Yeah, Kunstamot Kunstamlugin zu Weimar versus Ilaxophon. <laughs> yeah, Holy exactly. Shit. Uh, hey, hey, fuck Total Wolf. <laughs> is what that is what that all but fuck Germans and Total Wolf. But um, it says Edward Ella Coffin. Wow. Wait, let me see. Let me go. Let me, let me see if I can put this through a paywall. Okay, Edward Ella Soffin, five foot four, seventy-seven years old, fresh from a cataract operation, walks across his living room, his arms stubbing out of his short sleeve shirt, his hands waving around his room. Take a look at my pretty things, he says. It's almost impossible <laughs> to focus. There are five paintings on the small walls, ten paintings on the longer ones, and wait. When someone closes the front door, there's a painting on the back of that. Nudes, landscapes, portraits, caricatures, montages, photographs, paintings, and more paintings. Sack, blah, 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 blah. This is the man who who bought two $5 million, $5 million for $400? Then what is he doing standing in front of a windmill snow scene that looks like it belongs on a box of ch- <laughs> Dutch chocolates? <laughs> Holy shit. That's fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, there's wow. a whole article about it in the, in the Washington Post. I'm I'm seeing there's like a thing here with like a like a a, a, a drawn out like caricature explaining the whole situation on this website that I'm looking at. This is fucking insane. Yeah. Oh my god! Wow, that is f- crazy. Weimar versus Ellisoffen. There you go. Amazing. Holy West shit. German government against my uncle Eddie. Wow. Yep. Love that. Weimar yeah. versus Ellis often. <laughs> and you wonder why. These are the bones. These are these are the gra- the soil with which Matt was fucking born. Was yes. Fighting the power from day dot. And you you, th- you <laughs> wonder why I don't like Mercedes. There you yeah. go. <laughs> okay, let's fucking let's keep it rolling. That was a nice little detour. Kunstamann Lugen zu Weimar versus Ellis often. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> That case, that's lore. That's that's Ellis off and family lore. That's anyway. amazing. And the winner, yeah, I mean, the okay. winner, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of meme of the year with fifty one percent is George's intro post. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. Yep, fits. No one did. No one does it better. No one gives us better content than George Russell. Let's keep it rolling. And let's not forget Uncle Richie. Grandpa Richie. Oh yeah, my my who, my grandfather. Yeah, who actually was who actually killed Germans. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, eighty <laughs> second um, airborne baby. All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's keep it rolling. All right, next up we have bromance of the year. Ooh, nominees yeah. are Oscar and Lando, Daniel and Yuki, 
Max and GP and Martin Garrix in the F1 grid. Yes. So people were so people were annoyed that we didn't have Max and Charles on this list. But you know what? I got to say that is not that's just that's the internet to trying to make something make happen something that happen. doesn't yeah. That's like that's y'all trying like wishful fucking thinking, that's okay? That's you shipping them. Yes. That's you making mountains out of molehills. Um yeah, a lot of good stuff here. I, you know, something else that the internet's kind of doing, but you know what? I kind of see it a little bit. Is they're 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 trying to ship this like Lando and Oscar are, are secretly in love with each other thing. That's like the internet is like dying for that to be the case that they're like everyone's secret so lovers. starved for fucking romance and everything. <laughs> yeah. it's like yo, d- like guys. there's there's plenty of like you know queer art out there now you know we're not it's like you can you can find it it's out there but um yeah i mean if, if formula one's the place where you need to get your rocks off then you know i'll do do what you got to do do what you got to do they're certainly a perfect they're they're certainly like a cute opposites opposites vibe like they're both little twinks but one is like you know life of the party and one's like a bookworm so that's kind of mm-hmm. cute but i just saw this video with max I mean, sorry, with Daniel and fucking uh, Yuki. They were listening to the tracks. You know, when they do that thing where they listen to the tracks and, like, they can guess which which one it is. And, like, they've had now enough time where, like, I've never seen Yuki so swagged out. Yuki was just, like, he was just so confident and, like, in his shit and just, like, grounded. They were just, like making jokes in this way like when yuki was with pierre he was kind of like a little bit like whatever you say pierre like a little puppy dog and pierre was like his older brother and now daniel has that same kind of pierre ishness but like with less to prove than pierre so he can kind of meet they're like they're finding their way to meet each other 2024 the content between yuki and daniel and not just because they're friends of the pod yeah is gonna be off the fucking chain well, I feel like Pierre had to like cool guy Yuki a little bit, right? Whereas Daniel doesn't have to cool guy Yuki. Daniel, just yeah. is cool. Yes, and I think he sees Yuki's power. I think he understands. Oh, he, Yuki's he understands power. the numbies. He understands the numbies, <laughs> and I don't think that Pierre fully understood the numbies, or he did, and he was like a little bit afraid of Yuki's numbies. Yuki's power. Yuki's, Yuki's power. Yes. I mean, we posted clips with Daniel and Yuki, and, like, the Yuki one fucking blew the fuck up. The Daniel ones did really well, but we were expecting the Daniel ones to be like, okay, well, I guess we don't even have to do a podcast at this point. I guess we can, like, retire (laughs) once we post this Daniel Ricardo. I guess we're both buying condos in Florida, like, now. (laughs) Yeah, I guess, like, like, we're we're moving to Monaco because financially that's the only correct decision after we post this. But, in fact, it was the fucking Yuki clip. So I don't think that they win this year. But next year, to me, it's like they're the guys to beat. They are. They are the guys to fucking beat. They made it to the AFC Championship game this year, but next year they are the Super Bowl favorites. Yes, for sure. It's all going to come together for them. Yeah, I mean, Max, Max and GP, GP win. I think because just how complicated their relationship is. It was rich. Yeah. Yes. It wasn't just like look how amazing. It wasn't like the one note Carlando bullshit. Right. Where it's just like, look how amazing friends we are. Even though, like, secretly it's like, I feel like Carlos is like Black Swan fucking incepting mm. you with darkness. Right. Yeah. Black Mamba style. You yeah. Know? No, y- y- Max and GP have this, like, complicated, like, it's it's they're both strong headed. It's powerful what they have. You know what, they, know what it is? You know what, you know what they are? They're Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams in the notebook. And it's like and it's like when she comes back to him and they're like fighting again and after all this time and 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 they're like look at us we're already fighting. And then so it's like it's 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 like GP is like look at us we're already fighting man like well, why are we yeah. fighting? And then Max is Ryan Gosling and he's like well that's what we do. We fight. I tell you, you tell me when I'm being an arrogant son of a bitch, and I tell you when you're being a pain in the ass, which you are 99% of the times. I'm not afraid to hurt your feelings. Damn. Dude. 
And then he's like, what do you want? Was that an audition monologue for you one time? No, I just, lo- I was just, I loved that movie when I was in love with Bleep This Out. Um, I, wa- I watched that movie when I was in love with her in high school and was like, that's us. I'm Ryan Gosling and she's Rachel McAdams. So I memorized that whole fucking scene. No, like what, what makes them great is their bickering. Like without that, they're not great. And that's what that, that's what the notebook relationship is. It's like, this is what, this is what we are. If we were, if we were less strong people, we wouldn't fight. That's what that relationship is. Well, we bicker because we, I mean, I don't know. Is this just a thing that you're, 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 um, is this just something that people say in your dysfunctional house? But my parents would always say, yeah, we only scream at each other because we care. And we love each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, that can be misused and 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 can be for bad as well. Yeah. No, my sure. grandmother. My grandmother used to say she used to say that her 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 dad never yelled. Her dad yeah. never argued. And then one day he just left and he was right. gone. You know? Yeah, that's can that care. can happen. He didn't care. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to get it out. You know, uh, people. When you're fighting, you got to fight for for stuff, and sometimes that means you're two different people, and and you can't just give over. You know, someone's going to be holding their tongue, even in the most affable people in the world. Like if if you don't get it out, you got to get it out. So I feel like I feel like um, it's going to be the McLaren boys, but I think it should be GP and uh, and Max. Let's see what the people Hell, thought. Hell well. Yeah. Thirty nine percent of our voters said the bromance of the year was Max and GP. Wow! Well done. Yes, guys. we did. We look did at it, that. Joe. Fuck, we we're going to be the president of the United States, Joe. Perfect. Yes, they are the bromance of the year, baby. Oh man, that's fucking awesome. All right, let's let's keep it rolling. Next up, we have conspiracy of the year, mm. and our nominees are Alonzo dating Taylor Swift. <laughs> Done. We should just end it. We should Done. we should just end it right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, Lewis dating Shakira. Yeah. Uh, Alonzo starting his own rumor that he's going to Red Bull and the Nico curse. Mm. It's not even a gray area. This yeah. the the Taylor Swift thing seized the internet. It put it did. Almost as much for Formula One as Taylor Swift actually dating Travis Kelsey did for the NFL. It really, <laughs> yeah. it really caught some serious heat. Yeah, even when people knew it wasn't true, like people thought it was true for maybe half a second, it yeah. endured. Yeah, it, it captured people's imaginations. Well, it didn't just endure. There was some work that went into it enduring, which is that Fernando Alonso <laughs> stoked the flames. <laughs> Yeah, Fernando Alonso was like, yes, keep it up. Yes. Yeah. Like a fucking e- e- evil man. He was, over doing, his... he was doing a bit of a fire dance around the fire. <laughs> yes. Pouring yeah. with lighter fluid. <laughs> yeah. Just little little salt bay, just sprinkling lighter <laughs> fluid all over the rumors that he's dating Sailor fucking Swift. No, a bunch of people, we posted that clip of us talking about that on ESPN. And then I, there were like at least like five or ten comments that were like, this is the reason I started watching Formula One was because of these <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people, people became fans of Formula One off of the fake rumors that Taylor Swift was dating Fernando Alonso. That is the power, really, of Taylor Swift. That's the power of Tay. That's the power yeah. of the fuck, of, of the tea hive or whatever they call now, it. Now, we All just right. need to get, we need to get yeah. some rumors started that one of us is dating Taylor Swift. Totally, or it could, or it could be I'm dating Taylor Swift. Oh shit! Yeah, right. That the the, the internet does love the, the internet does love the uh, the uh, the rumor that that's what's really going on. All these guys are Taylor's beards. Maybe it's Jenny. Jenny reaches across the aisle, and gets in there with Taylor, or she's on the same aisle. Whatever it is, <laughs> um, we, we hold hands. We yeah, hold hands. Yeah, they just hold hands in one pick. Yeah, that's got to be the winner. I mean, if it's, I, I'm, I'm now just curious what the percentage is. If it's not a hundred percent, something's wrong. <laughs> I think. I mean, here's the thing: the Shakira Lewis rumors felt more plausible. 
I mean, that was like, oh, those might not be fake rumors. Like, we were seeing them on the boat together. They were, like, active. They were, like, going to dinner, all that kind of stuff. Um, and Lewis didn't play into it. There could have been something. If they had actually dated, that could have actually been something. Maybe people will say that. But I hope it's at least 70%. Let's see what they said. So uh, the winner and the runner-up were pretty close. Uh, what? Coming in first. Coming in first with 42%, we have Alonzo dating Taylor Swift. That's okay, crazy thank God. That 42%. Second runner-up with 30% is the Nico curse. Oh, wow. The Nico curse. Yeah, that's cute. It's just this. Yeah, that's cute. That's cute. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of Nico Rosberg. Dude, Nico Rosberg doing those types of numbies against Taylor Swift just proves his power and his relevance. Yeah, that's another person we've worked really hard to. Uh... We've worked hard for, yeah, to people to love him. Should we? Hey, Nick, Nico Rosberg. We would love to have you on the Red Flags podcast. That's right. That's right. We've we've we we sent an email to some office of yours. He's got five different emails. Yeah, we've sent an email to your team, but we would love to have you on. We think you are the best F1 commentator. We love your whole vibe and we think that we're the perfect place for you to come hang out and and talk all things Nico Rosberg and all things Formula 1. So. I want him to take a selfie with me in the background. I want him to curse me. Yeah. Nico Rosberg, if, if you come on the pod, it's, it is required that you take a picture, a selfie, and we're in the background, and then the podcast <laughs> ceases to exist. <laughs> it would be worth it just to watch my whole life go up in flames. Yeah, you'd be like, I'm just a part of something great, at least, for once in my life. Yeah, part of something yeah this bigger. is bigger than me. This is bigger than <laughs> us. Um, wow. Wow. Okay. Let's, let's, let's keep rolling. Next up, we have Toto Wolf Management Fail of the Year. There we go. Here we this go. This will gonna... this will happen every year. We will do this every year until he's out of the sport. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no. We'll just follow his like companies and like look at his companies and the trades. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. All right. The nominees are the elective surgery date, the Mercedes letter. Gaslighting his drivers on the radio and the Mike <laughs> Elliott James Allison shell game. Wow! Wow! These are all just—they're all really strong, horrible, horrible <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you just did one of these, you'd be like, "This guy's a fucking idiot and shouldn't have a job." <laughs> but four, yeah, it's tough. Mismanagement. I. <laughs> I mean, the letter. Let's go through it. The letter was just... Yeah. I mean, he came out at an 11. Mm-hmm. It's like, where do you even go from there? And he's always, like, totally. over-accountable. Like, the car was disgraceful. Right. No one should be able to... No one should have to drive it. Right. Terrible. Absolute shameful. The letter was like, you get caught cheating... And then you're like, I will never do this again. Like blood oath, you're on the, you're on your knees. You're like, baby, I swear it'll be different. But you give yourself no wiggle room, right? And then the rest of the season, it was like the more of the fucking same. Yeah. So it's like he over promises with the letter, and then it's like more of the same bullshit. And they don't understand the car, and the car is a fucking... So the letter was like... The letter's the perfect encapsulation of, like, Mercedes uh, Mercedes when they're not on top. That's the perfect floundering, distillation of it. Floundering. Yeah. They have to do some sort of, like, Martin Luther thing where they nail the... Shout out to the German Protestant... Yeah. Where they nail the thing to the wall and they say, you know, this is the this is it. This is the fix. Right. This is what right. we have to right. do. And ninety five theses. And but the thing is they're just he's just making it up as I go. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's it's he doesn't actually know. Yeah. Yeah. And it and now what are you gonna do? You can't write another letter. No. <laughs> you, you you blew your letter load. Yeah. 
But, but guess what? I'm sure they will write another letter when they fucking suck week one next, next then year. Then they fucking move. They switch the Allison and Elliot guys. They switch yeah. the Allison and Elliot guys. Honestly, that's the real, like, as it, these other things are more, like, media-focused. The things, the real fuck-ups of Mercedes this, th- of this year was the mismanagement of George and, and uh, Lewis and this whole James Allison debacle. That was, like, that was real. The letter is like PR, and it's and it's and it's and it speaks to like a kind of vibe, bad vibe. Same with him, to doing the surgery that that speaks to like a bad vibe of him not well, well, being the, the letter. It just sort of speaks to like oh, we have to do something. Right, it doesn't matter what. Just let's do something. Right. It's like no, just be bad. You can just be bad. Yeah. You can just be bad. They'd be like, yeah, no, we didn't nail it. We're doing our best. Fuck off. It's a rebuilding year, and you can say rebuilding. that in interviews. You don't have to like. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's part of sport is that you have ups and downs. The bull, you know, Michael Jordan was on the Wizards for a while, you know. Yeah, and then he retired, and, and then he retired, for- and that's maybe what you know the Mercedes used to do. But but there are teams that have ups, and then they and then they like you know, Bra- Tom Brady had years in between some of those fucking Super Bowl victories. It's okay. Warriors. It's the Warriors had. It's not like it's not like when Tom Brady when like, when he when he lost the Super Bowl to the Giants, they came out and, and and wrote a fucking letter, be like flogging themselves publicly about it. No, it's they like, went they 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 went back in the lab and they tweaked some things and they got and they and they yes fucked the world for seventy two hours. And it seems like Toto's a little bit more interested in like the public perception of the company as opposed to like what's really fucking going on behind the scenes. That's what it feels. Yeah. The, then the, yeah. Then there was the elective surgery, which was yep. If if you're in crisis mode, right? You no, know, you know who could be take, doing elective surgery? Christian Horner. <laughs> that guy yeah. really doesn't need to be there, but he shows up every goddamn day. Yeah, you yeah. know why Christian Horner could have taken elective? You know. Max could have gotten elective surgery for the last four <laughs> races of the thing. Max yeah. could have gotten a fucking BBL if he wanted one, okay? <laughs> could have gotten a fucking – he could have gotten some filler, a BBL. Hey, hey, guess what? He Hey, that guy didn't doesn't need either of those things. He doesn't need any of that <laughs> shit because he's fucking plump, juicy. baby. He's juicy. <laughs> he, he could have gotten that fucking incel surgery where you break your legs to make yourself taller. Could have gotten all those fucking things, okay? And he still would have been champion. And he still would have been the fucking champion of the fucking uh, yeah. of, of F one for the last however many races there were. That, that's who could have got elective surgery. Yeah, but apparently Toto is the one that gets it. The guy who's that's losing right. to his customer teams, you know, in a, in a tight battle with Ferrari, yeah. you know, where they won, they ultimately won by three points. Where his drivers are fighting. Where his drivers are fighting, and and there's a total sense of mismanagement from. That's really the top down. You know, that's really on. on and him. the apparently Elliot was the guy who was in charge of the zero side pod. Right. So they they moved him around, and then now he wants to spend more time with his family. Yeah. <laughs> so there was that. Yeah. And then he's always calling the drivers, telling them that Lewis, you can do this. Yes. You can do this, Lewis. George, you are on for P four. Like forgetting that he's got the five second penalty. I'm like, are you right. paying attention? Yeah. Crazy. He he's the only guy that gets on the radio like that. Uh, none of the other team principals do. None that. of the other team principals. They talk on the to them radio. after the race. I'll talk to you after the race. This is between you and your engineer. It's crazy. It's crazy. He he's either not. The, he's either like completely gone. Yeah. Out of the picture. Yeah. Or he's like not empowering his people. It's like when the owner of the job. team like starts yelling at the coach about like how to coach like you know. Put this guy in. It's like no, that's you do that after the fact. Anyway, who won this? Who what? Which which of these mismanagement blunders was the was the top? So with forty seven percent of the vote, uh, the winner of Total Wolf Management Fail of the Year is gaslighting drivers on the radio. Wow! Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. weird that he got. Yeah, it's that's a pretty. It's weird to hear him on the radio. Yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, he's not even on the radio. He's, like, calling in from his cell phone. Right. Because he's yeah. not fucking there. Yeah, that that, that happened once. Him yeah. calling in from wherever the fuck. Not even there. Can you imagine you're there, you're in Qatar, 
and you're sweating your ass off to the point where you're like almost passing out and then you hear and and you're having like a mid race and then you hear Toto like from his couch in, in fucking Monaco. S- in Monaco or Switzerland or wherever the fuck he lives he's like George you can do it and you're just like dude fucking fuck off no that Crazy. was when he was telling them to stop fighting oh yes boys stop fighting yeah all right make me Make me, Dad. It's like when you can beat up your dad. When you that, that moment where you're like, I could beat you up now. What you gonna do about yeah. it? All right, let's keep it rolling. All right, next up, continuing on the Mercedes Benz theme, we have George Russell Radio of the Year. Oh, yeah. The nominees are when he overtook Oscar and said, "Big move, come on." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, every kind of British exclamation he's used, like bloody Nora, sugar, blimey. Uh, the the radio when Mercedes told him about management in turn six, and he said, I don't know if you can see, but I've got a car right up my ass. Mm. And uh, the last one is, we were forecast for a podium. How'd we fuck this up? Mm. People were mad that we didn't say the, the is, is it raining? People were upset that we didn't put that in there, but I felt like the forecast kind of covered that a little bit. Um, that's an honorable mention. Well, he's always talking about the rain. Yeah. That's kind of old news. I mean, that was this season, so that the was... The sweat kind of, on the helmet. The sweat on the helmet, yeah. That's that's what that's what, what people were annoyed was it on there. That's honorable mention. We we, we, we hear you. Um, uh, I mean, the, the most obvious choice is probably... There, can you not see there's a car up my... Arse. I like the blimey and the sugar. Yeah. I always like those because he always then drops an F bomb and says shit. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> like when he's composed, he 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 want he wants to be a guy who doesn't curse. Right. But then he t- ultimately isn't that guy. <laughs> That's what I love about George ultimately. Right. Is that he's such a fraud. <laughs> he's such a yeah. shitty snake. Right, right. He, he's like, I'm George Russell, <laughs> company man, the yeah. male version of Mary Poppins. Right. But he's, but then ultimately he's just a fucking psycho killer. <laughs> so whenever he does any of those fucking hoagie things, I love it. Yeah. That's my choice. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah, when he's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, blimey. Sugar, blimey. Yes. Shiitake mushrooms. And then he yeah. goes, fuck, shit. Yeah. Cunt. Yeah. It's amazing. It makes it makes the cunt and the fuck better that he yeah. that he actually tries to not do it sometimes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Blimey. Great Scott. <laughs> I mean a lot of drivers are like shitty on the radio. A lot of drivers are sassy on the radio. Right. No other driver attempts not to curse and then Curses with a band and late. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. A complete animal. No one fights it harder than George. Yeah, he'll. You know what? You know what's amazing is he's like, all right, tell Lewis. You know we're gonna be working together this race. You know, like what was the race? He's like, you know, I'm. I'm not gonna fight him. I'm not gonna fight. He's like, and then like two minutes later, like, are we working together or not? Are we just? Are yeah. we just animals? Are we wolves here? What the, what the fuck? <laughs> like the way he one yeah. eighties in, yeah. in the matter of minutes. Yeah. Between like company man George. Team yeah. player George and like killer George is just right. it's Chef's kiss. It's my favorite. It's my one of my favorite things. To the Jekyll and Hyde of him is my right. favorite. When you push, when you put a, a a a posh British bloke against the fucking wall, what is what what actually comes out? You're like, all right, that's the real stuff. That's what's really going on here. All right, what 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 what's our winner, Jenny? So the winner is with forty four percent of the vote. I don't know if you can see, but I've got a car right up my ass. Yep. Sure. Sure. Not the most yeah, nuanced that's... pick, but, you know, a good pick. It's the other side of the coin. All right, let's keep it rolling. Fernando Alonso social post of the year. Mm. And the nominees are... Yeah. Fernando doing the gritty. Uh, the extreme close-up of his forehead. Yeah, it's got to be. Huh. Him sitting playing the Taylor Swift song and the Kevin James shrug. Man, so many hits this year. So many hits. To me, 
my favorite of those is was the gritty. Yeah, the old man and the gritty. Just what are we doing the gritty on a frozen wake? I mean, Fernando Alonso, what are we doing a gritty on a frozen wake? Is <laughs> like there's nothing better. That's the gritty to me. That's the winner. The the close up was the most kind of that that went the furthest. That's kind of more of the shot heard around the world. Um, obviously, the Taylor Swift had its own power, and then the Kevin James was like. But by that, by, by the time you came up with Kevin James, we already knew what to expect. You know, we're like, oh, you know, Alonso's gonna fucking jump on every. He's gonna jump on every. He he was reading the then he started reading the he read the book with the Roman Empire on it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. he's just on every trend at that point. Yeah, yeah, he he understood. But to me, nothing was better. No F1 social media post was better this year than Fernando Alonso's Too gritty. gritty. Yeah. Let's see who won. The winner with 44% of the vote was the extreme close-up of his forehead. Wow. What was second? Second with 31% was the Taylor Swift song. Whoa! Damn, people sleeping on the gritty, dude. Yeah, well, people are just going with by numbies. They're not going by, by numbies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. Yeah, box office numbers. That's okay. That's okay. We're going by Rotten right. Tomato score. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's keep it rolling. We have social media post of the year. Okay. The nominees are Charles and Lewis's mood co-post. After they were disqualified, Otmar's selfies, mm. Brad Pitt's awkward selfie with the drivers, and Charles saying he's ready to officially enter Eurovision to represent Monaco. Mm. I mean, the numbies version of this is is the Lewis and Lewis Charles. and Charles. That's probably, you know, that kind of did the most numbies. It's like, oh, there's a driver I like. There's a driver I like. They're doing something together. Yeah, they're like acknowledging the the one thing, like this thing that happened in this cheeky way. It was like the most bang for such little word. Like everyone was looking at them. As as our as our Friday beers uh, supervisor says, Jacob, it was yeah. low lift. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was low lift. And Lewis just said, Lewis said, "Hey Charles, I got this." And then what what did the caption say? I think it just said mood. Mood. Hey, Charles, you want to you you do 10 million likes? Yeah. <laughs> you want to do more numbies than you've ever seen? They're, just just yeah. let me handle this, okay? Yeah. Just let me fucking handle this shit. Stand next to me. Up. Oh, that's too close. All right, right there. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my... I mean, to me, best... My favorite were Otmar selfies. That's Otmar, Otmar for me selfies. personally, but there's no way it's going to win. Yeah. Let's see. Let's Let's see who the winner is and what the percentage is. The winner with sixty four percent of the vote, yeah, is Charles and Lewis's mood co post. Yep. yep. Otmar came in in second with eighteen percent. Okay. okay. I mean, because Otmar Otmar actually didn't have a team come up with that. That was just we're just watching a guy take pictures of yeah. himself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got that that awkward selfie with Brad Pitt. It was pretty great too. Also it was great. great. What was great about that was that it was also like it wasn't great for the reasons that they thought it was going to be great. Like that's something that that the that the public took and made into something different. It, well, because that wasn't planned. Uh, that wasn't planned. It was like, oh shit, there's Brad Pitt. Let's take a picture with him. Right? And they thought they're like, this picture's going to be awesome, and the picture's so not awesome, and that's what makes it. They thought they ate, but there were crumbs yeah. everywhere. And then yeah. the public gets to eat those crumbs. Yes. Whereas when Lewis and Charles, it's like we're gonna we they ate, they ate, and everyone just fucking scarfed it down. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's uh, uh, play a drinking game with this pod. Let's keep it rolling. <laughs> <laughs> we have sluttiest moment of the year. Mm. The nominees are Pierre saying his nickname is Tripod. Mm, yeah. The Monaco photographer getting Brundle's digits live on camera. The Ferrari ice bath content and Max jizzing champagne on the podium. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, 
I mean, call me call me crass. It's got to be Pierre talking about his own dick, like on an F one channel. I mean, that was so, and, and we know, we know from the sneak peek we've gotten into the um, Secret Santa that Pierre was gifted a tripod this year by someone for Secret Santa. Yeah, I mean, Pierre talking about his cock being huge on an official F one channel during their fun little games had to be this absolutely the sluttiest moment of this f1 season was he what was the thought process there in case like my dms weren't like Liddy McTitty enough. enough like 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 it's teenage humor it's just like uh, like <laughs> like it's it's Beavis and Butthead. Like he said it, and then he was like, oh. <laughs> like afterwards. That's no, the no, energy. he said it. He said it, and he was like, oh, oh. yeah, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's probably that's probably the one. Let's see, let's see what percentage that won by. I hope it's large. So the winner with forty three percent of the vote was Ferrari ice bath content. Wow. Such... Well, here's the thing. That's what people actually enjoyed. That wasn't a turn on that Pierre said that his nickname as a child was Tripod. You know? It's too on the nose. Carlos Carlos knows what the people want. Yeah. It's kind of like you could just wear gray sweatpants once and everyone can see your tripod and then <laughs> and then you would have won. <laughs> you know, there's this great moment in the last season of the other two where um, one of the brothers is like trying to win an Oscar or he's, like, he's trying to be a movie star. And they're like, he's like, how do I become a movie star? Like, oh, like, it's just so hard. No one's saying yes to me to be in any of these projects I want to be in. And then Wanda Sykes plays like his publicist and she goes, hey, Carrie. And she like whispers to him and she goes, do you have a and he goes, yeah, I actually do. And then <laughs> he's running outside wearing gray sweatpants. And then, like, the next scene, they're like, so they watch you for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you just show, don't tell. Just, and that's what the ice baths were. The ice baths were, like, just showing your hot. Like, your, your hotness isn't for you to tell me that you're hot. Just be hot and let the people do the thing. So that's, it actually wasn't slutty. Really, Pierre said that for the boys. It was for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> it was for it was for the boys. For the fellas. It was for the fellas that he wanted the fellas to know. Precious angel who must be protected at all costs of the year. Charles Leclerc for being unlucky and releasing really depressing music. <laughs> Yuki <laughs> for that touching Franz goodbye and finally meeting Jason Statham. Mm -hmm. Daniel Ricardo, who literally broke his own hand to save Oscar's life, and mm. Oscar for just being Oscar. I think the winner is going to be Charles Leclerc, just because he's Charles. I think Charles. I think it's Charles. I just got to. I, I think that he's definitely our winner. It, the rest yeah. feel like honorable mentions. Did you see the video of Yuki meeting Jason Statham? Yeah, amazing. It was incredible. A little too much Michael Italiano, honestly, for my taste. Yeah, I was like, like Michael, we don't need you there. This isn't about <laughs> you. Respectfully, you're leaving you're leaving the sport. This isn't about <laughs> you right now. Okay. <laughs> you just see like a cane, like of the old vaudeville like cane. Yeah. Like, they just book him out of there. <laughs> yeah, they just exactly. book him out of the shot. But Yuki, it was so cute how nervous Yuki was. Yuki was like, my heart is beating. So, I mean, Yuki meeting Jason Statham was like us meeting Yuki. <laughs> Yuki's our Jason Statham. Jake, Yuki is our Jason Statham. Hell yeah. I would, I would, if, if we met Jason Statham, I don't think our hearts would be racing as fast as they, they were when we met Yuki. They would be racing. They're, I, they'd be racing for me because they'd be like, I can't wait to tell Yuki about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm that much closer to Yuki. I could show Yuki a picture of me with Jason Statham. He'd love One it. more thing to talk to Yuki and <laughs> about. Yeah. All right. Let's see who our, our victor is. And with 41% of the vote, we have Charles Leclerc for being yes. unlucky and re releasing depressing music. Yeah, he's, he's, music. He's, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about him. Yeah. Next. We're getting into the biggies now. Okay. So next up, we have Karen of the Year. Mm. Ooh. The nominees are 
Carlos when he was intimidated and <laughs> impeded. <laughs> Fuck him, dude. He sucks, yeah. dude. Yeah. George, are we playing the team game? I'm faster mm-hmm. than Lewis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> Esteban Ocon for crashing into Alonzo and then immediately blaming Alonzo. Mm. It's a good list. Our final nominee would be Max versus the wind. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, all good. Cho- this I think this one will be kind of close. A lot of them have been like pretty dominated by one. I think this one's going to be like a tight, a tighter match. I think. I think. I think if we're like looking at the actual definition of a Karen. Yeah, like if you're reading, if you're if you're going in the dictionary and you're saying like, "What yeah. is a Karen?" Literally, right? It's Carlos Sainz, right? I am intimidated. I'm scared for my life. Right? Please, yeah. <laughs> please arrest this man. Yeah, 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 yeah. For because yeah. I because of something that I feel. Right. Inside. It's calling the police on people that are just like hanging out. I was intimidated. I was he intimidated. Intimidating. It's not. It's not against the law. That you're scared yeah. right now for no right. reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Ocon crashing into Alonso and then blaming Alonso is kind of, that's pretty, it's like you fuck up the order. Like you tell, you tell the, the waiter one thing and then they bring you the thing that you ordered and then you like insist that you didn't order that and that they fucked up. Yeah. It's my mom. My mom never asked for us extra Russian dressing. She just never asked for it. Yeah. Oh, and then so she's tricky. like, where's my extra rushing dressing? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Where like, is it? Ask? Yeah. Well, it's like, did you ask? You didn't ask for it. Right. But, like, still got to. Anyway, I'm just getting triggered just talking about it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To me, it's Carlos Sainz. The being just like the, 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 the that being on record. He's intimidating me like I'm being intimidated by him. What was that in reference to? What happened? Checo was aggressive, you know, did one of his Checo yeah. moves on him. Right. But I think they were like racing each other hard. They were like racing they were like going at right. each other. Right. Like, I think I think I think they were trading blows with each other kind of. It was in Austria. And then Sainz was like I was intimidated. I was really intimidated. Yeah. Intimidated. Yeah. It's like, dude, that's a crazy thing to say. <laughs> He's intimidating you by just like racing you Hard. in the in the racing thing. Also, uh, what Car- uh, what uh, what Perez was saying was that Carlos was moving under braking. Yeah. So Carlos was like playing dirty. Yes. Carlos was like playing dirty and then playing and then and then playing, playing victim. All scared. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. He was like he was like Smeagol where like he's like doing the evil thing and then Sam freaks out and he's like, "Ah, master." Right, ah, right, right, ah. right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. But this is just like good hard I'm watching it right now. This is just like good hard racing. If anything, the person being dirty is fucking Carlos Sainz. Yeah, and Daniel Ricardo, sweet baby angel Daniel, exposed him for being the one that impedes all the time. Yeah. So, guy's a snake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's it's got to be Carlos Sainz here. We'll see what the people say. But it won't because he looks like he does, and everybody's fucking <laughs> digmatized by him. I won't stop. I won't stop. It was really close. Okay, yeah. It was really close. It was, but, but it was thirty eight percent to thirty four percent, and <sighs> the winner was George. Are we playing the team game? Because I'm faster no! than Lewis. Oh. Oh. And what was second? Second was Ocon crashing into Alonso and then blaming. Wow. Where was where was where was Signs? Where was how much? What this? percentage? Signs had get? seventeen percent. God damn it, you Fuck guys! It. We have to. You, you guys, know what this means, you know Matt? When they say open your eyes. You know what they say? Open your eyes. You guys need to close your eyes <laughs> and just and just like listen to the facts of the case. You know what this means, Matt? We have to. We gotta hit it hard. We haven't reached the the appropriate amount of people with the understanding that. The, the the Carlos is a you know I guess I guess as as our daddy says keep up the signs hate I guess we'll have to I keep doing gotta that. go in harder this is I'm really disappointed I've been too subtle too nuanced <laughs> with my signs hatred yeah um all right okay these are the last two awards yes so here we go we have hottest moment of the year oh shit Carlos telling Ferrari, yeah, it's on purpose regarding Lando and the DRS in Singapore. 
This one's going to win, and I'm going to sign off. So that's... Yeah. Uh, Alonzo watching Lance's race while he's racing during the Miami GP. Mm -hmm. Easy one. That's the one. There you go. The Ferrari (laughs) battle in Monza. Oh, yeah. And the Fernando Perez photo finish in Brazil. Yeah. Can I give an honorable mention? Yeah. Yeah. Charles Leclerc taking it to Max in Vegas and me just blowing my load for being <laughs> right. Yeah. That was pretty Charles sexy. in Vegas in general. Charles also passing Perez in the last lap. Arguably um, sexier than Alonso's pass on Perez. It, 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 if you don't think that that was the hottest moment, I know it's not on the ballot, but if you don't think that that's the hottest moment, then and you're American, you should get out of the country. <laughs> you should forfeit your citizenship. Yeah, and 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 see if and see if Carlos Sainz will have you in in fucking Mallorca. <laughs> All right, let's hear who the winner is. We know it's it's going to be fucking Sainz. Let's hear it. So with forty six percent of the vote, it's Carlos's. Yet yeah, it was on purpose in Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, before Matt storms off, let's just go. Let's just go straight to the last. Yeah, to go slow, the slowest yeah. race of the year. Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz wins. Has to slow down his, to win. His only two <laughs> wins: Silverstone, fucking gimmicky. Suppose Charles Leclerc should have won this race. A fucking gimmicky race. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. All right, last <laughs> fucking one. Yawning. He's heard it all. Yawning. Before. Let's fucking let's 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 get this. Let's. Let's let's redeem ourselves, Vanker Nation. Let's see if you did. Our final award is Red Flag of the Year. Mm. And the nominees are Lance pushing his trainer, mm. Euro F1 fans hating on Las Vegas, <laughs> Aston's quote-unquote upgrades, and the fans booing precious baby Angel Charles in Mexico. Mm. I mean, it's got to be... It's got to be the Euro fans. It's got to be the Euro fans. The the Euro trash. It's got to be the Euro fucking fans. This whole, you know what? And it, it's been so frustrating because everyone I've talked to who doesn't know about F1 has been like, what happened with Vegas? It was like a total mess, wasn't it? Yep. And it's like, that's what that is. It, that's what the that's uninformed. All that in. That's all that got through. Was what a mess this is. Did you know that they're... Guess what? You know the trees from the Bellagio that were torn down? Guess what? They're going back up. They're in the Bellagio. They're, 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 they're potted, seated, ready to fucking be planted. They will be up within a couple of fucking weeks. Brian, they never... Ca- it was never about the trees. You know it. I know it wasn't about the trees, but, Just you know, they made it. They use the trees to jam up our asses. That's right. <laughs> to jam their fucking European bias up our asses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be Lance. People might vote Lance Stroll because that's the that's more of the obvious choice. But you I know hope we're going to do, Brian, you know, what we're going to do yeah. from now on every race that happens. We're going to grade it against the Las Vegas GP. That's right. And I think, honestly, all of them are going to be worse. Yeah, I think I would say that almost every race this year was worse than the was than every the Vegas race year. worse than the. What was better than the Vegas GP? Maybe Singapore. Maybe Singapore, yeah. But Singapore, was, yeah. Was the Belgian GP any good? Was Spa any good? I can't remember. We're gonna do. We'll do a season review, and we'll actually go through each race, and we'll yeah. yeah. Let's do that. Let's go yeah. through each race and be like, was it better than Las Vegas GP? Great. We're going to do that. Yeah, that'll be our next step. Yeah. Um, I hope it's I hope it's what we hope it is. If it's not, I'm going to be disappointed in the Vanka Nation. Well, but- if it's not, we just won't air it and we'll just say, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, who's, our, who's our last winner, Jen? With 47% of the vote, it's Lance pushing his trainer. No! Yeah. <sighs> What was second? Second with 33% was fans booing Precious Baby Angel Charles. Whoa! How much was Vegas? 13%. 
To life, to life, l'chaim. Uh, it's your fucking Bob Bar Mitzvah, dude. Fucking Jesus, dude. What's crazy is, what's crazy is, um, this is just really edifying to me because it just shows that I haven't gone hard enough. Yeah, I don't think areas. we talked about it enough. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's the answer. If only you had gone hard. Only if only we had gone harder in the paint against Carlos signs. <laughs> and against the Euro the Euro fans against hating Euro Vegas. trash. Yep. Damn. Next year. Yeah, next year we'll be talking about Vegas the entire year. Just I think <laughs> I think next year. I think that next year after every race, one of the categories we do at the end was how did this stack up to the Vegas GP. <laughs> <laughs> I unironically think that's a great idea, bro. Yeah, we no, no. I'm a hundred percent serious. We're doing that next year. A hundred percent serious. <laughs> Did it stack up to Vegas? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that idea. Um. All right. I guess that. I guess that fucking does it for our awards. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. An amazing award ceremony this year. Yeah. Thank you all for voting. Yeah, thank you thank for you voting. Right. Even voting if a couple of things poorly. you voted wrong were wrong and bad, um, we still love you. Thank you for everyone who, you know, posted their Spotify wrapped. It's pretty heartening to see how many minutes you guys have listened. To. Some of you guys have listened to us. Yeah. Um, pretty touching, inspiring stuff. Yeah. So we love you, Vankas. Uh, yeah, next, I guess, yeah, maybe, yeah, next week we'll do, we're going to go through each race, talk about their favorite races of the year, and we'll compare them all to the Las Vegas GP. That'll be our, that'll be our next episode. Maybe. The the, the season might be off, but that doesn't mean that the red flags are off, too, baby. We're on, and we'll be coming to you still every fucking week. And the page, get on the Patreon now. December's going to be a big month for the page. A lot of fucking stuff. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to hit at least three episodes on the page for you guys in December. So get on there. We love you, Vankas. Until next time. Goodbye, Vankas. Auf Wiedersehen, Vankas. Yeah.